Or just stand right here. Frozen Four post game. Uh, I'm with Frank Saratori, Jess Myers from the Rink Live. We're at Amelie Arena in Tampa. That was a tough one. I just got back from the Gopher locker room. No, uh, no, and it, they're uh, devastated. Oh, of course they are. And you know what? It, it makes you sick. And a guy like me, I, like I have friends on both benches. Yep. Like I got, yep. I got uh, Bobby and Killer on one bench. I got Mike Corbett on the other bench. And and uh, <laughs> in some way, shape, or form, like I was going to leave here happy for one and and. Uh, and sick for the other, and uh, you know I'm so sick uh, uh, for my for my buddy Bob and and, and, and Killer and, and their boys. Uh, but uh, that's hockey. That's the way it goes. Yep, yep. Yeah. Let's talk about that because at one point the Gophers are up two nothing. You know the old joke: two goal lead is the worst lead in hockey. They seem to be in control. Got a nice uh, a first goal on a Quinnipiac mistake, and then they doubled the lead on a nice play off a faceoff shot went wide. Jackson Nelson pops in a, a rebound off the end boards. Then it seemed like the tide in this game really changed. Well, you know, it's hard, too, on the bench. Like, you, you know, the Gophers scored first, then they scored second, they got a two, and then Quinnipiac scored. So it's a two-to-one game. And, and as a coach, like, you do want to protect that lead. You want to manage that game. You want to um, – eventually a bounce is going to come your way, and then you need to capitalize on it. And I think, it, you know, to me – it looked like the Gophers, and I thought they did a great job of managing the game. Hey, Jess, they, Quinnipiac did not have an outnumbered rush, an outman rush, until the winning goal. That was the only time. There was no two one ones yep. That was everything. They didn't get out an outnumbered uh, situation the entire game. So the Gophers did a, a good job of managing that. But sometimes when you manage, you manage, you're keeping guys back, all of a sudden, you know, you lose momentum. You sure. know, there's there's that fine line between you, you still got to keep playing. You know what I mean? Yep, yep. You still got to keep playing. You want to manage that lead. You want to protect it. You don't want to be reckless and careless and give an outnumbered rush and and, uh, and 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 beat yourself. But in the process, uh, like I said, I, uh, in the process of that, I think uh, they, they they lost some momentum. Quinnipiac was uh, came in here calling themselves the Big Ten Killers. <laughs> And they did it again. I mean, what what did they do well, did you think? Especially, I thought, the last maybe 30 minutes. They held Minnesota to two shots in the third period. Um, you know, both teams seemed to ice the puck a lot. But what did you see in the... Well, in the, I mean, first of all, they're a team of, of grizzled, hardened veterans. I mean, uh, there's some... They've got seven or eight uh, uh, graduate players on their team. That's the fifth-year players. I mean, it's a men's league team. Yeah. Minnesota and Michigan are the youngest teams in the country. Now, granted, they've got star-studded uh, uh, NHL uh, draft choice type players, the young superstars, but they're still young. And uh, Quinnipiac is an, is an old, deep, experienced team, and, and they stayed with it. I thought in the first period, partway through the second, like Minnesota's speed, like they, Minnesota, their team speed was a notch and a half better than Quinnipiac. Yep. But then as the game evolved and evolved, and, and, and of course Quinnipiac keeps coming, Minnesota's trying to protect their lead and all that type of thing, um, you know, the men, the men eventually yep. took over. The men took over, and I thought, you know, uh, Jess, I thought it was good in the in the when, when the you know obviously not good when Quinnipiac ties it, but I was glad to see the period end in the third period because if Bob could get in the locker room and they could reset, they could refocus and reset, and say, hey, it ain't we're not protecting the lead anymore. You know we got to go win this game, but uh, Quinnipiac with a with a set playoff, the opening faceoff, and uh, and give the devil their due. Well, let's talk about that play because because uh, uh, Rampack Note said they drew that up and just. I mean, I said sudden death is sometimes very, very sudden. Ten seconds. I mean, just like that, boom. Yeah, like uh, give give the devil their due. I mean, they won the draw back, and uh, and and uh, their center uh, and uh, and uh, their weak wing exchanged positions. They put and they sent the puck over to the strong side wing, and eventually the center coming from the weak side was the one that that uh, that won won the race to the net and. Uh, Beautifully uh, uh, timed. If a set play, I mean, if that's a set play, I mean, uh, uh, that was a, a masterful uh, piece of coaching. To be honest with you, you got to uh, give uh, Quinnipiac a lot of credit. Uh, uh, a masterful job of coaching yep. in the third period. I'll tell you what, to pull their goalie with a power play, um, you know, uh, with still with 30 seconds left on it and three three minutes and change uh, left, it was uh, it was a, a very it was a very masterful call to do that, and it was a very gutsy call gutsy to do call. gutsy yeah, call to do that. But uh, sometimes that's what you need. Hey, sometimes that's what you need to do uh, 
uh, uh, to change a game, and and they did. The extra risk, of course, being that you're killing a penalty, or you're you're on a power play, so the team that's killing a penalty can shoot at that empty net from the other end as much as they want. Absolutely, I, and and you know they got the extra attacker. Everybody thinks about doing that, but not everybody will do that. You know, not everybody thinks about it, but not everybody has. You know, has the courage uh, uh, to do that. They did, and they did it on the big stage, and it paid off. And uh, you know, as like I said, I'm uh, I feel so bad uh, for Bob and and, and Killer and, and their boys. Um, but uh, but uh, you you got to give the devil their due. Uh, Quinnipiac, uh, they beat uh, they beat Ohio State, they beat Michigan, and they beat Minnesota consecutively to yep. win the national title. And oh, by the way. They came from two goals down in the championship game to beat Minnesota. So, uh, you know, uh, you, you just you have to give them all the credit in the world. Uh, they're the national champions, Jess, and, and uh, they deserve to be the national champions. First time national champions. There's something to be said for seeing a team win it for the first time. We've seen that a few times here in the last 10 years, but uh, congratulations to Quinnipiac. That's it from the Frozen Four in Tampa. We've really enjoyed uh, having you, uh, your analysis. Frank Saratori, head coach at Air Force. Uh, this has been fun. and. Uh, like we said, heartbreaking for Minnesota, but a, a, a masterful hockey game, an entertaining hockey game, and uh, a kind of a fun way to close out the season, I guess. Jess, thanks for having me. All right, that's it from Tampa on The Rink Live. Lots more on TheRinkLive.com. I'm Jess Myers, and we will see you at The Rink.